Hi, we're going to find out what life is really like for the people in Bolsover district. Let's go meet them. There's such appalling things said about people that are poor that you would never ever say to a disabled person, to a woman, to somebody of a different ethnic origin. You would never say it, it would be a criminal offence. But if somebody's poor, you can call them, I, I don't know, from a pig to a dog and back again. But you can stand up in government and say it and, and get a, a clap after. <music> Well, I used to obviously think, relate poverty to wealth and you've got no money, you are in poverty. But since working at Wheels to Work, it's more about restrictions and because you can't do certain things, so it's having time with your family or having the ability to go even to the doctors because it's just not local enough for you or avoiding them because the costs and implications that it'll have on everything else. One of the questions we ask is, would you have been able to take up the job without the help of Wheels to Work and 9 out of 10 say no. We could do with better leisure facilities around here, i.e. such as a swimming bath which would be handy. Bus service could be do with being a damn sight better. Better childcare for people that need it instead of having to pay through notes for it. And basically a better standard of living, it'd be better. If there were things more around here, like there's nothing for us to do at Balls Over. Hello, my name is Jakub and I am one of the young filmmakers behind this project. And we're going to find out what's really going on in people's lives. I've been talking, I've never stopped talking and challenging the authority and nothing seems to be happening. It's Easter holiday now, there is hardly anything around for the children to tap into. And I've got three girls, it's a struggle for me to keep them entertained during that period of time. So it would be helpful to have more amenities around here really and facilities Yeah, They have the space so I don't think where there shouldn't be more infrastructure around there for children. The mining industry closed down. It used to be a proper community where everybody knew everybody, knew what everybody needed, everybody banded together to help out. Recently, about a year ago, we finally had the front front door replaced. That took about nine, ten years for them to come and do it. Now, the thing is, is I was up and down to the doctors constantly, and we found out that it, the door frame and the door were rotten, and it was the rot spores, because I was constantly coughing, and for like two weeks I'd not get any sleep, because I just couldn't. <laughs> Whenever I try and open my curtains, there's a freezing cold draft, so I have to wrap Ken up in quite a lot of layers, and then he still gets quite hot, but it's still freezing cold, and 
every time we've been trying to get it up with the council, they do nothing. They don't like, they just like, they don't like us. <laughs> massive thing is the council. A lot of people come in and they seem to think that the council's their enemy, just automatically. I think they need to be more friendly towards them and make them feel like they can actually be approached by the customer. That would cut out a lot of stress for everybody, I think. Well, I was struggling with getting about. I was struggling money-wise, with mushrooms growing in my bathroom. Even my toothpaste used to freeze in winter, it was that cold. Things has gone off in my life. My mum died, my sister died, my children's mother died. Things that's happened in army and what I've seen in army. If they hadn't developed me out, I'd have probably been dead by now. You need to be out, you need to be in the fresh air. You need to be part of the community and support the community and it's the only way we can do it. I love to come because we have a laugh and it passes many an hour. But without the transport, we couldn't get here. The five drivers are voluntary. We cannot praise them enough. They help each and every one of us from outside to inside, which is total care. You don't get that anywhere. I think it enriches the people's lives. People that we get on the bus are unable to get out themselves. He comes into the house, he knocks on the door, of course, and shouts who it is. Are you ready, love? I've sometimes got my coat on if I haven't, he helps me with it on. By the time they come back, they've got a proper smile on their face because they've met friends while they've been out, made new friends while they've been out. And I think it does make that big difference. And it also, it, it raises that standard of life. Look, I can show you me juggling the rent, the bills and the food, look. Yay! Yay! Our unemployed man goes into the job centre. He was made redundant two months ago from a low-paid job. He has no savings and is struggling to make ends meet. Draw people's attention to some of the distortions that have been made on programmes like Benefit Street that show people who are unemployed who are suffering as some kind of skivers. And we know very well from the statistics that it's only a tiny, tiny portion of people who really don't want to work. Most people do. People and it seems like Stash Highbrook, they certainly do. Some are reduced to the state where they have to go to food banks. I said I may be down, but I'm not beat. And you won't find me on We've got a food bank and we estimated we'd serve about 50 people when we got some initial funding. We thought that 50 was a lot. I think last year we gave 700 bags of food away. I was doing 24 hours work at the pub, three hours computer course at the adult centre. They said it wasn't enough. I had to do 35 hours looking for another job which to me it was pointless because I was already in a job, but I got sanctioned. They just they stopped my money for two weeks, affected my housing benefit and everything. We're not a flock of sheep, we're all individuals and we need looking at individually. You know, a fair regime, basically. We've had one guy, well it was a couple, they just had a, a, a little child and um, the guy had he'd got to pay the rent or get nappies and, and it's not... It's not an either or. I managed to get through, but without help from my friends, I wouldn't have been able to have done it. You know, if I'd have been on my own, then I'd, you know, I'd have, well, I might not, I might not have been here now. <laughs> we are next to the super kitchen, which gives us a super chance to talk with people. It's just such a struggle and it's just a cycle you get stuck in where you think maybe it's easy just to stay off, stay on benefits and then get off. You don't get enough support getting off into the work. You know, there was, at one point there was a thing where the job centre would say, we'll give you £100 allowance to buy you clothes to go for an interview. It's like, yes, that's brilliant, but I'd be more supportive if you could help me with my rent for the first couple of weeks because once you get your job, they stop the rent. 
and you say are working a month in lieu, you don't get paid to the end of the month and you need that money, then you just get caught in an automatic debt cycle. I don't think there is enough job and I don't think there is enough opportunity for people to get into a job, even if they want to, it's not there. You basically go, Brilliant, I've got a job. Oh God, I've got to pay for so much. <laughs> you know, at one point I had to get um, from a food bank, I had to get a box of food and it's, you feel so degrading and upset. You think, I've got a job, but I'm actually having to get handouts. If the definition of happiness is, am I happy with everything going on around me? Hell no, I'm not. Boy, am I angry, and I mean I'm angry, and I am at the front of everything that's been attacked. People in this area are absolutely fantastic, and they have got a hope and a future, but nobody asks people in a deprived area what are the dreams. If we invest in people and see them as articulate, intelligent, and then resource them. The state is providing less and less. So therefore the voluntary sector have to provide more and more. We're managing at the moment, but it's a little bit like, you know, the finger in the hole in the dike thing. We, how, how much longer before another leak springs out? So that's the end of the film, but it shouldn't be the end, it should be the beginning, it's over to you now. <laughs>